Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And you're listening to The Drop, our weekly podcast about all things running and the uh, nonsense that goes along with that. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. Mm-hmm. Feet first. A lot of feet. No diving into the shallow end here. Yeah, you don't want to dive. You could hurt yourself. Yeah. So speaking of diving... Uh, I was gonna go into dumpster diving, but right. yeah, yeah, we already <laughs> covered that. <laughs> if kidding. you haven't seen Robbie drink a, uh, I, I think that was like twenty ounces, thirty-two ounces, thirty-two dude. ounces oh, of gross. coconut water that we found on our garbage can in Baltimore City. Just somebody had, for some reason or another. We need to put a on, not in the garbage can. That's a qualifier. Yeah, but it was. It's still a garbage <laughs> can. Just, I already think that coconut water tastes like trash water. So it's I. Yeah, I feel like you need to mix it with, I don't know, I feel like it only goes in a smoothie. It's so gross. I like it, like especially when I was doing that thing where we cut out like the, the whole 30. Yeah. That stuff tasted so sweet. There's no sugar in it or anything, but it tasted like, that was like candy to me when. There's no sugar in it? Like natural so. sugars? Maybe a oh. little tiny bit, but it's it, it got extremely sweet and I was like, oh, I love this stuff. It's good for when you're hungover. Yeah. Like for hydrating. Yeah. Um, or just tired of drinking water. <laughs> like, yeah. Let me try something else. You want to escape to the tropical yeah. oasis. Yeah, I felt like I was on vacation because it was cold here in Baltimore. So I feel like we have a new spirit animal for Robbie, though. I think his spirit animal is a raccoon. I like that. People used to call me squirrel. So you've evolved. Oh, yeah. Because I like, think a raccoon is more like more anthropomorphic. Is that the right word? Anthropomorphic. Like, I want to say yeah. that they kind of wash their hands. They kind of, I attribute human qualities to raccoons yeah. where I don't to squirrels. And they wear masks and people still wear masks. Yeah, bandits. So. Yeah. <laughs> They're COVID conscious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm okay with that if you want to. And it's like Robbie Raccoon. Like I Rock, like that. Uh, Robbie yeah. Raccoon. Should, I think we should make a shirt like with a <laughs> raccoon on it for Robbie's minions. No one's buying that. Oh, I bet you we are. I'm um, going to design that one up. Okay. I'm interested. All right. All right. So. What's going on in the running world, in our lives? Why don't we talk about you? How was recovery after the half? Yeah. Oh, what's okay. running after? Um, Donna? that was pretty normal. I think I just took two days off and then just start running four or five miles. You hit some trails down in Richmond. Yeah, I w- went to Richmond this past weekend and went with a friend on some trails. I think it was on the like west side of the city, and I was shocked at how many like really good trails they had within the city limits. They have some really nice parks there too. Yeah. I mean, Richmond isn't like a city city. I mean, yeah, but neither is Baltimore and we'd have like zero trails. Inside yeah. Of city. But I, th- I don't know when I, when I think of Richmond, I wonder what the population, it is. seems more like a kind of suburb with sure. Like a downtown strip. You're right. It is only 226,000 people, yeah. but in, that's going to go up because a lot of people are moving there. But Baltimore um, only has five hundred and seventy-five thousand. So I mean, that's still this, double. Richmond though is a city that could really benefit from like it's the downtown's so cute. Yeah, but it's, it's like vacant and yeah, like run down. It's like if that population did rise and people decided they wanted to move to Richmond with Kira D'Amato. Yeah, oh, yeah, I should have hit her up. Yeah, you should have. I think there's some cool spots there. She was calling him and she was like, "Can Robbie run with me yeah, when he's in town? Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> can she? Can he run ten minute pace with me?" Uh, but there was a, like, they have a lot of cool breweries there and, mm-hmm. like, art stuff. But, yeah, the downtown is, like, hor- like the strip downtown. Yeah. I don't know what. It'll have there. one cool, really cool shop or restaurant. And you'll be like, ooh, this is really nice. And then you walk next door and it's, like, <laughs> again, raccoons, like, staring out the it, window. It, at yeah. You. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of cool spots. So, anyways, went trail running in the Tectonics. We can talk about that a little bit later. And did, like, nine miles it was 70 degrees out that day. So it was amazing. It was just, I mean, the trails were packed with people, but yeah. otherwise. Your one picture, it looked really nice. Like it looked like a soft trail with like There's that. tons of bamboo around in all that right. picture. Yeah. yeah. It was like one of those places where somebody so it just wasn't let it all run like wild. that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it actually was very scenic because it runs along the, I think it's the James River. And there's this like one area where it's all the rocks are exposed and people just like hang out. It's really cool. I like that. Yeah. People and smells bikinis. very strongly of marijuana. Marijuana the whole time. Is, is Virginia? Is that one of the states where it's legal? Isn't it like it's, everywhere I now? Feel like no, it's but I mean, like whatever. you can you can't walk like in Baltimore. 
we you have dispensaries if it's medical, but you can't be like, you know what? Uh, it's lunchtime. I'd like to get some weed. I think it is because I believe my friend said that he would get some for his friend. I can't remember. Uh, on April 8th, Virginia became the first southern state to legalize the possession and use of marijuana oh. by adults. Oh, there you go. But could you go to a store and buy it? Do, like, do they have stores? I'm pretty sure if that's the case. Yeah. I know D.C. is wide open. Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be. It has to be that way. I don't. I don't understand the marijuana laws at all. I don't think anybody does. No, n- nothing makes sense. I just anymore. need to make it. You can better. fly. Mask, mask you, you can fly with it, and nobody cares. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a thing now. It's like remember, like you would be terrified if dogs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now it's like my buddy who lives in LA said it's just like the whole airport just smells like weed. I don't. You know, that's one smell. I don't mind. Like cigarette smoke definitely bothers me. But yeah. if I'm running through the harbor or whatever and oh, it smells, I'm kind of like, <laughs> somebody's having a good time. Yeah, it really is. Which is always now. Well, I've I, never gone for a run through the harbor. I don't. For me, it, that I, you don't not smell it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I know that you're, you don't smoke or do any kind of uh, marijuana use. It's just not for you. But um, do you care if people are doing it? Like, I don't care. I, no, like, especially because I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm just like, yeah, go smoke your weed, do nothing. And I'm going we'll, we'll to rise to the top over here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like a way that to get ahead. Megan's edge. Sick in the head. <laughs> you guys um, enjoy that weed. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I do feel like when we were working with certain clients in certain states that there was a fog <laughs> that we didn't have that they had. I, I attribute it to like that East Coast drive yeah versus west coast laid back yeah <laughs> but who knows yeah um robbie aren't you training for something uh i think <laughs> i guess technically yes but oh, yeah. also not i have zero plan half 50k uh yeah half 50 but you kind of have to train like you can't just go out and do a 50k i think well, you, you can. can it's but it'll it, suck it will suck it can't like that second loop that th- well technically the third loop but the second big loop I'm probably gonna I've, find out. <laughs> I've run that race several times, and I'm always like, "This will be the last time I ever run." This I love race. that race. I, I love too. hate that race. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've only done it once before, but so it's a hat hat 50k, and it, you don't have to wear a hat while running it. No, it actually stands for the founders' names. It's yeah, like a, Hinty Anderson Trail. Yeah, and it's in Susquehanna State Park. It's in. I think it's like. I should need to check my... Oh, it's in like a month. And it's weird because the weather can be <laughs> anything. I kept thinking it was like the middle of January still. It's not. Yeah. Um, you're right. Yeah. So it could be 70 degrees. Mm-hmm. It could be 30 in snow. Like, And the problem with 70 degrees is there's no leaves on the trees yet. Right. So, so just like blasted. if the sun is out and it's a clear day and it's hot, you are just like... It was 80 it. one year we ran it. Yeah. Like at the start. It was like 85 Whoa. by the end. And then there's been ones where we ran it where it was snowing. Yeah. Yeah. And freezing. And when you, the, the thing, so the hot one really sucks. The snowing one sucked because we did it. You go across this field that's just open and you just get blasted. Yeah. You've run it before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then the snowing, but then it, when it gets warmer, it sucks because it's super muddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the second loop is just like mush. And there's like a creek crossing within the first four miles. Do you know, yeah. you know what else is challenging on that course is, you know that one long section of road that comes down to mm-hmm. before yeah. you get to that big aid station? Yeah. That is like gravel. So if the weather's been good, it's all kind of smooth and there's no ruts. But if it rains, mm-hmm. it opens up and there's like oh, loose right. rocks and ruts from the, the rain. So you don't know if you're getting like, yeah, that's a great thing about trail shoes. And we'll get into the Tecton X, which is probably what you're going to wear. But before you either had to go with something nimble and light that mm-hmm. provided no protection on those roads with the rocks, or you went with something like the Hoka uh, ATR, which that was my pick, which was great for the pushing protection mm-hmm. yeah, yeah but it wasn't very nimble over yeah some of the more technical terrain yeah i mean i guess the good news is it's a double loop so if you want to change your shoes mid-race you can yep i have um, i've changed socks and shoes nice yeah smart why not i mean it's not like that's the, the thing the, you're taking three minutes right four minutes. i'm not going for a time goal sp- yeah. specifically you're not going for the win <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey I'm not, like i looked at times i'm like there's not even like I can't even come close. No, to that I think Caleb ran in like six minute fifty three pace or something. Like yeah, that. I didn't mean the win. I just meant like even placing like well. I'm like, plus I haven't been training 
for fast like marathon type. And thing. I feel it's like not, that course, you just got to go out of, and to have fun. Cause yeah, you can be out there all day. Well, that's the only reason I signed up for it. Yeah. Cause like all our friends do it yeah. and that, the finish is on this like hillside that's in the sun and everybody just like drinks beer drinks beer and yeah. watches the finishers come in and it's like the best time ever it is it is and it's such a satisfying race to finish cuz it is tough and then I, I the the elevation gain and everything is is rough but it it's rewarding and they give you uh like the swags like yeah. crazy oh, good it's always good i still wear the flip flops i have from like 5 <laughs> years ago and it's it's, I cheap. I it's like those. 80 i saw that i think yeah. i finally I think it's threw like 85 out. bucks or something yeah. and you get tons of stuff the yeah. food is great the aid stations are great they really? have it is uh it's the only time of year i eat that one of those polish um oh, pierogies yeah pierogies. they're so good in I'll, race. I'll bang some of those down yeah, yeah. flat coca-cola Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will French say fries. the first time I did it was the first time I learned my lesson about just pounding soda in the middle of a race because it tasted so good and I was just drank like three cups of Mountain Dew. <laughs> I was so <laughs> nauseous for this next three miles. It was it was terrible. My one tip for that race for anybody who runs it is you're gonna feel great. You you do a short loop and then you do your first long loop and you're gonna feel great and you're gonna see other people that you're like. I run with that person all the time. They're out there. I can keep up with them, their pace, but they're usually going out too fast. And mm-hmm. then it's really that race is all about the the third and last loop. If you do that, if you run it smart up to then, you can cruise. The only time I've done really well there is when I've, you know, kind of played it easy on the first couple loops and then just yeah. let loose on that third loop. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. All right. So, well, I mean, we'll see. I think I'm going to do... I think I'll do a ten mile run on Saturday, and then maybe like fourteen on Sunday morning. Are we gonna Are cool. we gonna go out to uh, Cherimon? Are we able to go out that weekend? And maybe sh- we should come up. I yeah. mean, it's a good time to hang. It's it's fun. We can bring the camera. Maybe bring out the faster bastards flag. <laughs> maybe some sneeze guards. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't remember which mic was mine to turn <laughs> off. That's good. There'll be plenty of allergies out in the wood. And the other thing I would recommend for that race is Advil. Make sure you have some Advil with you. Oh, yeah. That's like a race day guarantee. Like, you just always take that race day. For sure. Okay, well. You're going to get some bad news from that when people are going to be like, you shouldn't be taking. Ah, uh, whatever. Oh, is that an, oh, uh, that's like a. Tylenol is a really bad one for your liver, especially if you're going to be drinking later. <laughs> Ty- does it have acetaminophen in it? Tylenol? Yeah. Okay. And then. that's the thing that's really yeah. bad. Advil is an ibuprofen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I take ibuprofen for every race for sure. Do you really? Yeah. And you know what else people used to yell at me about saying that the highly cushioned shoes I wear are going to ruin my form. And, and there's a study that just came out that says <laughs> new research says highly cushioned shoes don't yeah. negatively affect your running biomechanics. That, really? that so was in Dave, your face people. That was Dave Ames, his big, big thing. He hates hocus cause he's it's like, not, uh, it's I feel like we get a ton hips. of comments from people. Yeah. Wait, like, wait six months and it'll be another Another one saying, yeah, <laughs> your leg will fall off. Well, for now, I'm going to just live into this one. That's runner's world business model. They just find two <laughs> different two pages flip-flop every six months. And then add articles. in something about some ludicrous social, you know, yeah. <laughs> thing that we don't need to put a stance on. Like bears, bears should be able to eat out of dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> they should be, though. Raccoons should I, always be I don't be think allowed. you tell not bears what to do. <laughs> I think they tell you They what. make the rules. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, what else is, uh, okay. So you're good with the super shoes. You're going to survive. Yeah. And I honestly think that's how I've been able to recover pretty quickly from these marathons. Cause I do think that's why three in the past six months. People are saying that the shoes are breaking the records and I'm going to say it's not the shoes. It's the way that you're able to train with the shoes that is making the difference. Like you're recovering faster. Mm-hmm. Your legs are feeling fresher. You're able to do harder workouts. So I don't know that it's like on race day, all of a sudden you have this huge advantage because you're wearing, you know, these foam plated shoes. I think it's, it's no, a it's build up of everything. it's because you've been able to train harder because you can recover quicker. Yep. So you get a better performance. That's our take, Robbie. You yeah. can take that to the mm-hmm. bank. Uh, I, I'll take that, but I ran in the Allbirds Tree Dash or two today, and that was the complete opposite of what you're talking about. I ran in the Fast R this morning, and I'm I'm writing up my full review right now, but it's not a bad shoe. I I would hope I hope not. Yeah, 
Well, there's going to be some tweaks to it from the version she had. Though. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know if we want to talk about that now. No, yeah. we can wait. We can wait. You know what we could talk about though? Hmm. The Hoka Tectonic. Tectonic. Right there. Wait, I wanted to actually before we get to that injury report on Thomas. Are, are, I mean, are, I I are ran. You good? You, I don't know. I don't know. I ran. Um, I've been running through it. And the I, foot thing. Yeah. Is it is it still there? Because uh, you seem to. Do you want to tell everyone what you did on Saturday <laughs> yeah, yeah. or Sunday? Okay. Yeah, oh, I'll get into that. So, <laughs> I've been running on it, and it's been feeling not. I, I kind of scaled back some of the mileage, and it hasn't been feeling a lot better, but it hasn't been feeling worse. It's just kind of there. Mm-hmm. Um. So Sunday, Megan and I go for a run, an eight mile run or so I forget but we're we're at the furthest part we're at the skate park over by the harbor yeah and there's a metal slide and it's wet like on a playground like yeah. a playground yeah and you're I, a big kid at heart yeah I climb up there I get in well, it was very important we were making a reel yeah so <laughs> yeah. I shoot down the slide and I'm like holy crap I'm going fast yeah <laughs> Like it's wet metal and I'm just like, it was almost like a water slide. Like I was going that fast yeah. like where you're just shooting. And, um, I would have been fine except for at the bottom of the slide, it was almost like a bowl, like where I guess people land. And so it just kept digging a hole. Uh-huh. So when I shot out and I, I don't know how fast I was going, but all my weights behind me and luckily for me, my legs bent because if it had been the other way, I probably would have. Yeah. Like shot a leg out of the socket. Yeah, but Mortal I, Kombat style. Yeah, <laughs> you've been finished. Fatality. <laughs> um, I, I hit that side and I hyperextended my knee and popped back and I was like, "F." So Megan, it's funny because you made a reel from it and it looks awesome. Yeah, but you cut off the part where <laughs> you destroyed hurts. yourself. We'll have to just publish. But that. I have the full video yeah. and I watched it probably seven thousand times on Sunday. I mean, at this point. Danny Orr's seen it, Ben's seen it, <laughs> you've seen it, Jared's seen it. It like, doesn't look, it looks terrible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty <laughs> good. So I'm not even sure. We're five miles from the house. I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to run home. Like, I don't know if my leg's going to work because I'm kind of rolling around in the dirt. And Megan, it's like snowing and cold and yeah, yeah. not like, ideal. Yeah, and you don't want to be stuck five miles from your house in these conditions. Like, for Meg to run back the fastest possible way probably would have been three miles. Yeah, and it would have. Yeah, and then I have to get the car, which would have taken longer to drive back. Yeah, and then drive. So I would have been out there for like an hour. So I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of like it's starting to feel a little better. I start walking around. I'm like, it doesn't feel great, but I think I can run home. So we ran home, and I was like, this is the best my foot's felt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, maybe I fixed my foot by hyperextending my knee. You know that that theory where like you can only feel one pain at a time. That's what I, I said yesterday. Yeah. Then. It's like when I punch you in their arm, it feels better. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep punching myself in the head <laughs> and running all, all, the, all the miles. But um, so anyway, before that it all happened, I had contacted our friend Ben, who is a PT that Robbie runs with sometimes. And he's a.k.a. fast Ben. Like that kid is fast. Mm-hmm. Like Ben is like a sneaky fast person in Baltimore because you don't see him. Yeah, he finished like, 10th in the Baltimore Marathon. Yeah. You don't see him like up there with Jeremy and, and stuff like that. But. Like as far as just a fast dude, he's 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 fast. <laughs> anyway, he's also a PT, so he's fast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, well, is there another adjective? You're a writer. <laughs> um, Speedy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so he came over last night, and we did some stuff. And he doesn't think there's a stretch fracture. He says my foot's not responding in the way that a stretch fracture That's would. That's good. Which was good. So he gave me some exercises to do. Um, I'm one of those people that if you give me that stuff, I'll do it. Like it's not like I'll yeah. be like throw that out and just try you'll do it do. until you feel better then you'll throw it out probably yeah <laughs> but i mean it, it, some of the stuff is like easy stuff to do before you warm up for uh, a run so it's okay. not that bad um so we met with him and then i was i was gonna get up for the speed workout this morning and i just was like i, I think i need a day of rest and so i didn't go out and do my speed workout this morning which put me in a bad mood oh. but Really? Yeah. You should be excited that you didn't have to run today. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm like, do I fit it in later today? Do I just let it slide by? I mean, you're not like really training for something right now, right? I, I want to do well at, at... Shamrock 5K. Yeah. Just do it tomorrow. Yeah, probably. 
All right, whatever. But I yeah. don't think you need to get bent out of shape. Well, you get like it's a it's a landslide for me. It's like okay, you didn't run today. The it compiles other stuff that you know. Okay. Mentally, you know, just uh, a few things, and it just like falls into one. You're a loser. No, <laughs> kind of. I mean, <laughs> kind of fair. Say. <laughs> one skips one workout and like. The I'm done. I'm, I, yeah, I'm imploding. I won't get on the scale. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Um, you know, it, yeah, I, I I think that, yeah, it just bummed me out. So, okay. But the nice thing is now I got some exercises. It's probably not a stress fracture, according to Ben, who I trust. I mean, yeah. he's, he's a, he's a learned, guy. learned man. Does Very your doctor. knee still yeah. hurt? <laughs> um, my, that's the reason I didn't want to do the workout this morning when I woke up was. I feel like my knee is unstable and I kind of wanted to give it another day to kind of like sort itself out. But it was weird because I haven't been feeling any pain in my foot and at this morning <laughs> when I woke up. There, it also was like... Oh, the foot, foot also I, hurt? I just feel like right now I'm a little beat up and I just need yeah. to take a... Yeah, just chill. Take a chill pill. Are you going to be like have a bunch of braces on you while you're running? No, like, I like won't. And compression, tape everywhere? compression yeah. socks. No, I won't do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's that's the thing. It's like you know, I I look at it as far as you know, time wise, and you know, I want to be able to do certain things, and every day counts. Yeah, true. I feel you. So let's talk about the Tecton X. Now, Robbie, have we had good experiences with Hoka this year? Uh no, it's been a swing and a miss. They're batting zero point zero zero zero. It's so funny far. because I've seen some other reviewers having some really positive things to say about the lineup. Uh, what's their track record on lying? <laughs> um, I don't know, but uh, and put then it, also put them on a stand, see what happens. People Ooh, call lie detector. people calling the Carbon X three their the speed shoe. No one said that. Yeah, they did. I don't want to name names, All but right. I'll speed. I'll show you. They calling it a speed shoe. Okay. And I'm like, eh. Nobody's called Carbon X, the Carbon X a speed shoe since the first version on only because it was carbon plated. Ever since then, everyone's like, eh, it's pretty much a daily trainer. I mean, that's what it gets used for. Nobody's lining up right. to races being like, this is my Vaporfly replacement. Unless it's a PR stunt for Hoka. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's been a swing and a miss for the Kiwana, the Supersonic. Uh, the the Kiwana was a big whiff. Carbon oh. X3 was... An upper miss, and they said it was new foam. It like like when we were talking, we watched an, again another review site that's not really a review site because they sell shoes. Uh-huh. And they were talking, and they were like, "It's got the new foam, just like they were talking about the." Yeah, I mean, you could say it has a new foam. The mock but supersonic it feels the same. Yeah, um, and then so the supersonic we thought was going to be cool because it had a su- super critical midsole. You know, it did feel in hand a little bit different. Yeah. And then it just felt like a block of wood on foot. So the Tecton X. We weren't expecting much. Right. I mean, we were originally, but oh, then yeah. after, after trying, after the other trying some other shoes, we were a little skeptical. And then uh, we, I took it out for, I did an 11 mile run in the snow, which not great in the snow. There's the lugs are very shallow. Um, and, it's like has an exposed outsole. Can you show that, Thomas? Let me sh- Sorry. for those of you watching on the video. Um, Bobby, here you go. Pull that. Yeah, pull that so close to the camera. It has Vibram. If you're watching on YouTube, it has this exposed outsole kind of in the middle, so it's not great for like snowy conditions. Like I took it in, um, and smaller lugs. But the I took it out for a trail run on Saturday, like I was just talking about. And it was a mix of road and trail. And you've also worn this just on the road, haven't you? Uh, well, like just for like a run, short run, but mostly this past weekend was, I'd say, like twenty five percent road. Okay. And uh, and it turns out like, it. I think it's the best Hoka road shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so should Hoka just put out a version with no lugs on the bottom, but with. Maybe yeah. a smooth Vibram. Yeah. All right. Like, honestly, if uh, we... Okay, hire Robbie. He's going to come. He's going to turn your Tecton X into the best road mm-hmm. shoe this year. Yeah, so uh, honest... And, and there were some... We've heard of some Hoka athletes who said that they might be using this for road races. 
And it makes sense if you've tried their other shoes. I mean, the only thing that you have is the Rocket, mm-hmm. the Rincon, which I would use of of the road shoes. Yeah. The Rincon Three is my favorite. I'd say the I'd say the Rincon or this would be a good would be their best road shoe. Wait, are you saying when you say road shoe, like are we talking racing a marathon? Yeah, fifty k's. Yeah, I would. I would honestly, I would probably take that over. Yeah, the Carbon X, the Rock, maybe even the Rocket X. Oh, there's I, definitely over the Rocket. I don't even like the Rocket X. Yeah, I I would probably compare the Rocket X more to, uh, like that third tier of we yeah. tried a carbon plate. I can. It doesn't even feel like a trail shoe when it's on the roads because the lugs are pretty smooth, sh- shallow and smooth. Um, and then on the trails, I, I would say on super technical trails, probably not the best option because it's just there's not a lot underfoot and the carbon plates. It has dual carbon plates that like run side by side. And so they can, so they're not connected at all. Is right. it kind of like the H one that the yeah, sketches yeah, not have? Even it's like they float side by side. Hmm. Um, so I'm not sure. Like on the road, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still pretty right firm. Uh, on the road, it's nice. On the trail, it's a little uh, like Taylor and Alex thought it was a little. If you hit rocks and roots, a little can throw you off. Yeah. Um. And so I, I just got to say, yeah, it's, I mean, it's $200, which is at the Whoa. higher end of things for Throw Hoka. a plate in it. Yeah, right. Um, but I was Hoka like... Hoka raised all their prices, didn't they? Yeah, I, th- uh, I think by like, I mean, everyone is. Okay. But I would say if I don't... I literally cannot figure out how Hoka didn't take that midsole and put it on a road shoe. That's all you need to do. It's the inverse of the Mach Supersonic. So the Mach Supersonic has a super critical foam close to your foot and the traditional eva mm-hmm. underneath of that mm-hmm. and this one flips that right. has the softer eva foam close to your foot yeah puts a super critical so right there it's surprising to me that okay somebody tried it right they they whoever's tested these shoes and putting these shoes together somebody wore this and was like you know what this works better than that yeah like the why wouldn't you possibly just make them both the better i, I don't know it's shocking to me better way but the, the only issue I had really was with the upper, which is seems nice on like when you look at it, it's it's kind of weird. Like I, it looks like you gr- you did what I would have to do, which is tighten up that. Throat. That's actually that's actually Brandon's shoe. Mine, I did the heel lock lacing, and then I like I did I I t- retied it probably three or four times during my run because mm. I could not get, get it the fit. right fit, and like my foot fell asleep, so I had to unloosen it, and then it was like messing with the heel lock lacing i just couldn't get like a really nice you can see how the toe box on the shoe is a little bit wider as well which hoke has always had a problem with before their toe boxes are usually way too narrow but and it feels just like a little bit long like a little clown shoe ish Mm. so that was like the only thing i had personally i have a narrow foot too so i of all the hoka shoes i would say the Rincon is probably my favorite right now would you say that's yours i mean yeah i would say I would say that's probably my favorite Hoka, but I would say the Detecton comes pretty close to being okay, like that on the roads. Now oh, you, wow. You, that's what I mean. Like on the road, I think it's close to the Rincon. And then, Megan, you love the Bondi X. I do. And you're still... I still pick that one out and wear it every once in a while. I don't I don't know why. No, I can't I mean, really explain I it. it. I just It's super max cush. You yeah. love max cush. But it's a, and it's a little firmer, so I feel like you don't like mush into it as much. So, I don't know. I just yeah. really like it. But the Tecton is also like pretty pretty light too. I think it's like nine, 9 ounces for men's night or something. Yeah. I was just looking at the cuz I was like what did the Hoka NAZ elite athletes wear it at Houston? And I was thinking of Scott Fobble and Rory Linkletter and then I totally forgot they're no longer Oh, they're on not the team, but are they? Wearing, it, they're still wearing hokas, right? No, Rory wore the next percent really? two, and Fable wore Alpha Fly. According, this is according to Let's Run. I just I mean, went on here. Pro- they're probably right. Yeah. Holy cow! Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's just, and they both did well, right? They both PR'd. You know what's interesting is we didn't talk about this. Like we said, okay, this these shoes aren't quite up to like what we're expecting from Hoka. You got to wonder, and we're not involved with the athletes, so this all would be speculation. Mm-hmm. But you got to be like, if I'm on a pro team and I'm at a certain point in my career and I'm like, where's the shoe you 
promised that or, we would ha- have. I don't even know if they, who knows if they even promised. I'm sure all of them, when they talk to these teams and they're signing people, yeah. they're like, we will have, we're working on a vapor fly. We're working on an alpha fly competitor. I'm, sh- I'm sure that's in everybody's. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've heard that the next year or two might be not good for Hoka still, but I think beyond that, it could be better. So it's, it's you know, I th- all these guys take, Peaks and valleys, and yeah. right now Hook probably doesn't care as much because the They're nurses and the printing money casual people are like loving these shoes. Like if you go to the airport, I mean I, the new dad shoe is anything from Merrill, like hiking collection, <laughs> yeah. and like it used to be like it, you would go with Columbia, like the, Merrill, yeah. the Nike Monarch, but now it's like I see those brown hiking shoes and Hoka's. It's well, Hoka or on, yeah. Yeah, and the Hoka Clifton and Bondi are still going to be your cushiest, like most comfortable shoes for a lot of people. True. Yeah, until you they just, try them more. If you well, but but Hoka's sort of known for that. Yeah, and they're um, the young kids like the uh, chunky boy and style. The, that too. It's like mm-hmm. covers they cover all the bases. So if you're if you have that kind of revenue coming in from all corners, like. What do you really care about the ra- uh, you know yeah. racing shoe? I don't know. You know, but it is interesting to watch when that stuff dies out. How the companies come back to yeah the roots, and they could have been slow to move. I mean, it's like think about it. Think about how much they were expanding and growing over the last four years. There's got to be a lot of focus on just hiring and mm. you know just producing uh, producing shoes as far as and then the innovation might come behind it a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. You would think. These companies, and I, I don't, I don't, I have no idea, but I would think there's like foam salesmen coming from 3M and from all these different, you know, manufacturers of chemical yeah. composite that they would have people coming to them and saying, "Hey, this is what we think is next." I yeah. mean, you know that the Boost material went to Nike first. Right. Nike turned it down. Everyone turned it down. Yeah, right? and Adidas picked it up. Yeah, and uh, we all know that story worked out well for Adidas. But it's got to be the same way. Like, and for me, like Hoka, as big as it is now, and what the revenue they're making, I can't imagine these chemical companies aren't going to them and saying, "Yeah, let's Here's try the this. next cushioning yeah. thing." Uh, it was funny when I was in Richmond. We took our kids to the playground, and there was like it was cold out, so there was only one other, as a, some grandparents and their kids, and the grandparents were wearing ons. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, but those aren't those aren't comfortable. You don't know that. I'm just kidding. Yeah, Actually, what's funny is that... The difference is the Hoka, I think, is at least comfortable to w- walk around. What's funny is that I was wearing on, too. <laughs> 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 Actually, you know what? The I think it's the Cloud Stratus. Yeah, you like the look of that one. I love the look. And actually, as a walking shoe, it's it's not bad. It's pretty comfortable. Right. But like, if you're going to compare it to a Decker's X Lab shoe... Right. <laughs> yeah, totally different. Yeah. But... I mean, and that, that again, we will say that's another division of, or is Hoka division of Decker's X? I don't know. I know they're all under Decker's. Yeah. yeah. But the Decker's X lab stuff is still that if you want yeah, the best comfy walking around. As a matter of fact, when Ben came over last night, he came over in his uh, oh, Decker's dang. X boots and he said his entire family now has Decker's yeah. X. It's It spreads like wildfire once you experience it. Yeah. My uh, whole family's in them. Yeah. Same. Or some of my family. <laughs> I feel like I'm at a confessional. Um, anyways, so is that it? Let's just talk about your guy. Uh, you interviewed Kirk Christensen this week. Yeah, we kirked out with Kirk. Oh, yeah. I liked it. Kirk, Kirk, Kirk. Yeah, I have a long relationship with Gore-Tex, like as long as I can remember when it was time to get a jacket or to get a piece of equipment for skiing, for anything. You know, uh, my dad was like looking for that Gore-Tex label. And that was like, for me, that was a sign of quality growing yeah. up. Yeah, I think growing up, my family, uh, most of the stuff I got was Portex. <laughs> um, <it> was <laughs> a lot of garbage bags. <laughs> yeah, a lot of garbage bag ponchos. Wa- waterproof, not breathable. We put newspaper bags over our feet for boots. Um, yeah. <laughs> that actually did happen. Um, for real? Yeah, as like boot liners. Like, you know, the newspapers come in the plastic bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you put your foot in the plastic bag and then put it in your boot? Yeah. That's pretty good. It worked. Yeah. I mean, I hated it because it's so 
feels weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> old plastic bag, Robbie. <laughs> Searching for that free water on top of garbage. Robbie can. Raccoon <laughs> does, has a much better ring than plastic bag, Robbie. All right. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but no, Gore-Tex, but now that I've actually experienced Gore-Tex, pretty great stuff. Right? No more newspaper bags, luckily, for you because there's not many newspapers out there. Yeah, man, I've been searching for uh, boot <laughs> boot liners all winter long. They stopped delivering that cheap free <laughs> newspaper to the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, all righty. Anything right. else? I think that's it. Let's roll. All right.